In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Motorola Miniature 5 versus the new Miniature 6. As you can see from the pictures, the 5 and 6 look very similar to each other. The Miniature 5 has a reset button on the top corner. The Miniature 6 has had the reset button moved to the side. The 6 also has dedicated stored voice buttons versus the Miniature 5, which has the stored voice button on the selector switch. The Miniature 5 pager comes in either a 1 or 2 channel, and it has four knobs positions. The Miniature 6 comes with 1 or 5 channels, and it has 8 knob positions. The knob positions are labeled A, through H. The lights and battery indicator have been moved on the Miniature 6. The light now is at the top corner versus between the buttons or knobs on the Miniature 5. Uh, this is so you can see the light flashing from the front of the pager. On the Miniature 5 you had to look down on the top of the pager between the knobs to see the lights. The Miniature 5 battery indicator has three lights to indicate the level of the battery. The Miniature 6 has one light, but the light changes color based on the charge of the battery. There is a little light over here next to the selector switch on the Miniature 6. That's the yellow light that used to be here on the Miniature 5. You'll notice on these pictures at this angle, the Miniature 6 has a flat front housing versus the Miniature 5, which has a raised housing around the speaker. The Miniature 6 also has curved edges and they've been smoothed out by Motorola. This is to prevent the sharp corners that you might find on the Miniature 5. It allows the 6 to slide over clothing and equipment easier without being snagged. The Miniature 6 has a different um, internal on-off switch. Now, the Miniature 5 on-off switch um, is fairly easy to switch off and switch on, so you may accidentally turn the pager off um, without knowing it if you were to bump this switch. The Miniature 6 on-off switch is more difficult to uh, turn off and a little bit more difficult to turn on. It's not too terribly difficult, but it's enough that if you were to bump this knob, it's not going to turn off by accident. The pagers are similar in weight, um, but the Miniature 6 is lighter. It's actually 10% lighter than the Miniature 5. Uh, the weight on the Miniature 5 is 7.0 ounces, while the Miniature 6 weighs 6.2 ounces. So on this slide, we'll take a look at the bottom of the Miniature 5 and the Miniature 6 pager. The first thing you'll notice on the Miniature 6 is the contacts are very large and easily visible. The Miniature 5 contacts are recessed back into the housing and they have little holes which make cleaning these fairly difficult. Motorola has redesigned the Miniature 6 to allow easy con cleaning of these contacts. Um, you'll notice this uh, recessed area here. Um, the contacts themselves are very close to the uh, surface, so they're not back inside of a little hole like the Miniature 5. So you could take a Q-tip or some other cleaning instrument and clean these contacts off if you needed. Another thing you'll notice on the Miniature 6 is the holes here on the bottom and the slots on the side. These holes and slots match up to the charger, so when you place the pager in the charger, these act as a guide to guide the pager down into the sl slot. So the uh, 
contacts will line up with the charger contacts. Uh, this prevents the uh, pager from becoming intermittent or losing contact once it's been placed in the charger. With the Minuter 5, you sometimes need to place it in the charger and maybe wiggle it around a little bit to get those contacts uh, touching. The Minuter 6 has a very positive feel when you put it in the charger and um, there is no wiggle room. The earphone jack, uh, which some of you may not even know exists, but on the Minuter 5 there's an earphone jack here on the bottom. It's underneath a little piece of tape. Uh, the Minuter 6 ha it has been removed. There is no earphone jack on the Minuter 6. Another thing you'll notice on the Minuter 6 is the battery is going to be slightly different. Um, the Minuter 5 battery here has a lock on the back. The Minuter 6 battery has the lock here on the bottom of the battery. So if you were to replace the battery, you actually replace the lock on the battery itself. That is an improvement over the Minuter 5 which has the lock on the housing itself. Um, oftentimes on the 5, the lock will wear out after moving the lock mechanism in and out. And that will cause the battery to become intermittent. Um, with the 6, the lock is replaced every time you replace the battery. So every few years you might need to change the battery and you'll get a new lock. The Minuter 6 battery is a lithium ion battery. The lithium ion batteries are lighter and have less memory effect than the Minuter 5 battery, which is a nickel metal hydride. The memory effect is after you charge the battery a number of times, it will not charge quite fully. And so over time, the battery will have less and less capacity until the battery just doesn't hold a charge for more than a few hours. And at that, at that point, you're going to have to replace the battery. The lithium ion battery will last a little bit longer, will have less memory effect. You'll notice the battery contacts have been relocated uh, to the back of the pager versus the Minuter 5, which has the contacts kind of pointing out uh, this direction. The Minuter 5 had problems with the battery losing contact. Um, as you would move around, the battery would bounce up and down or shift in the back, causing the contacts to lose connectivity. The Minuter 6 has the contacts here, which are pointed straight out from the back of the pager. So when you slide the battery on the 6, you're not going to have that problem with the contacts losing connectivity to the battery itself. The lock is on the battery, as you've seen in the last video. There is a little um, mechanism or a little shaft that comes out and connects into the side of the housing here, and that locks the battery in place. There are two versions of the battery. There is a lithium ion, or excuse me, a standard version, version and a intrinsically safe version. The standard version is going to be your battery that will come with the non-intrinsically safe model. The intrinsically safe battery should be used with the intrinsically safe model. And if you don't know what intrinsically safe is, you probably don't need it. But intrinsically safe means the pager is, has been certified not to cause an ignition source in a flammable environment. You most likely do not need the intrinsically safe, but if you did have an intrinsically safe pager, you do need an intrinsically safe battery. If you do not put an intrinsically safe battery in the intrinsically safe pager, you lose the certification. So you'll definitely want to get the correct battery to go along with your pager. This is a picture of the chargers for the Minuter 6 versus Minuter 5. On the Minuter 5 there was a little lever here that you pushed 
and that would pop out the spare battery that would be in the back. The Minuter 6 has eliminated that little mechanism. That little um, lever would oftentimes break or fall off and then you would not be able to charge your spare battery anymore on the Minuter 5. The Minuter 6 doesn't have any type of mechanism. It's just a press fit, so you would press the battery into the slot and the battery would then charge. The lights on the charger have been moved. There's a light here, which is for the pager, and there's a light here, which is for the spare battery. The charger has been changed on the Minuter 6 to a USB connector on the back. You'll notice on the Minuter 5, there's just your standard round plug. This plugs into your power supply, which then goes into the wall. The Minuter 6 has a USB connector. The power supply you're going to receive with the uh, standard charger has a USB connector and a two-prong connector that goes into the wall, just like any other power supply. What you could do, and what this charger is designed to do, is unplug that power supply from the wall, take a USB cable, plug it into here, plug the other end into a computer, say a laptop computer or a desktop computer, or nowadays a lot of cars come with USB connectors. You could plug this into your car, a uh, USB connector in the car. If you don't have a USB connector in your car, you could get an adapter that plugs into the cigarette lighter. And then plug this into the USB adapter in your car. And you basically can turn this into a vehicular charger. Or you can turn this into a desktop charger. Or if you're in the field and you need to recharge the battery, you can plug this into a laptop or you can plug this into anything that has a USB connector. Um, this USB connector does not interact with the computer in any way. In other words, um, if you had the software, this would not um, program the pager. Um, this is simply a power, support, a power supply to the pager. But it is a very um, convenient thing to use. Um, you'll notice a lot of new smartphones today use the same type of um, connector. Um, you oftentimes get a plug that goes in the wall and then a USB connector that you can either connect to the computer or the wall. And so this is uh, similar to that. The Minuter 6 amplified charger, as shown here, has a little bit smaller footprint but one of the big things you'll notice is the pager goes into the charger from the top versus sliding in from the side. On the Minuter 5, you had to leave room on your desk to be able to pull this pager out. And so you had this big area in front of the pager that you couldn't really put anything if you set it on your desk or um, wherever you found it convenient the Minuter 6 pulls straight out. So you could put um, stuff around the charger. Um, you don't have to worry about leaving that extra room in front to be able to pull the pager out of the charger. You also notice on the charger there is no uh, mechanism to release the spare battery. Um, the Minuter 5 has this little tab you would push down and it would pop the battery out. Um, it's common for these to break off and then you're not going to be able to charge your spare battery anymore. The charger itself is pretty much the same. You have a knob on the front to change the volume up and down. Um, you have a big speaker in the front and you have a reset button. There are lights on it. There's a, a little light here. There's a charger light here and another charger light here for your spare battery. So all and all the chargers work pretty much the same, but Motorola has redesigned the charger uh, where it's much more convenient to put in and remove the pager than the old Minuter 5 charger. This is the back of the amp chargers. 
uh, Motorola has purposely made the connections the same on both. So if you have a Minuter 5 amp charger and you're using this relay output or you're using this antenna, you're going to find the Minuter 6 has exactly the same connectors. So you could just plug this connector that you have in here straight into the 6. It'll work just fine. The antenna plugs into here. Uh, the 6 does come with an antenna. It's basically very similar to the Minuter 5 antenna or almost the same. Um, this is an audio jack. Um, you can plug this into say, a stereo receiver or any other device that has an audio in. Um, this will not drive a speaker directly, but you could use this to send the audio to say a PA system or anything else of that nature. One of the um, improvements Motorola has made to the clip is they have now used a metal connector. Um, there's a little tab here that's made out of metal that you pull up and then the clip slides off um, forward like the Minuter 5. The Minuter 5 has a plastic tab. This plastic tab breaks off frequently and so you end up replacing this clip, not because the clip is broken, because it, but because this little tab has been broken off. So the Minuter 6 has a metal tab, and that's not going to break off like the plastic tab on the 5. Another thing you'll notice here is the hole in the back of the clip. You could put a little um, wrist strap or something else through that hole and uh, hold the strap as you're using the pager. Uh, the Minuter 5 does not have that hole. Another thing you can take a look at um, from this angle is you can see the lights, uh, how they've been slightly moved, your battery light here, and then this is the light um, that is on the front corner. You can see this light from either the top or the front of the pager. While the Minuter five lights you had to look down in between the knobs to see them. So thank you for watching this video. Um, if you want more information on the Minuter 5 or 6 pager, you can go to our website at pwservice.com.